All right, music fans, welcome back to The Real Music Observer. My name is Dave, observing real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. A while ago, I did a video talking about how David Foster ruined the band Chicago. Uh, I want to amend that a little bit. Um, I had just watched the Chicago documentary, which I think is a great uh great video to watch it's an education it's interesting i know uh, some people have said since it's being uh, put out there by was it lou pardini's brother lou is the current keyboard player in chicago and uh they are more or less uh peter satara anyway is alluding to the fact that he thinks it's a crockumentary because it wasn't uh done uh without that kind of filter or bias and um, I have to kind of disagree a little bit with Peter. I, I think there is a lot of truth in that documentary, and I would urge everybody to uh, watch it when you get a chance. It aired on CNN uh, last New Year's Day and uh, is out there. You can consume that. I believe if you go on Amazon, you can buy it or you can um, stream it for a fee and so forth definitely worth watching. I watched it for about a week, uh, <laughs> almost every day. Uh, big Chicago fan. Uh, Peter Cetera was fired from Chicago. Let's just be clear about this. Uh, Peter didn't leave on his own to do a solo career. Uh, Peter had demands, okay? He more or less said, hey, I don't want to tour as much. Uh, I want to be able to do solo albums, which contractually were, that was already in place uh, thanks to Irv Azoff in the early days of the full moon Warner Brothers relationship uh, Peter was able to go out and record solo albums that was part of the deal but prior to that whole experience uh, Peter more or less teamed up with David Foster uh, did a soft takeover a soft coup of Chicago, uh, brought in studio musicians, which really ticked off the guys in Chicago. I think uh, all of the original members were absolutely livid that Foster was bringing in outside players uh, to help finish Chicago 16 and especially on Chicago 17. And look, Peter and David wrote some great material for this new version of Chicago, which was more or less the uh, Cetera Foster Band. And, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about it because I am a fan of the early Chicago stuff, uh, the more jazz, rock, fusion material, and that was the bread and butter for the early fans. Uh, they were more of a progressive rock band. Uh, Robert Lamb has called it like the Beatles with horns. Uh, you know, you really had some interesting stuff happening, especially when you had Terry Kath alive. But uh, when the 80s showed up and Chicago's fortunes kind of uh, went south a bit after Chicago 14 especially. By the way, Chicago 13 isn't a bad record. And Hot Streets, I think, is a great record uh, with Donnie Dacus on guitar. Uh, you really should listen to that if you're a Chicago fan. Uh, but getting back to Cetera, Cetera and Foster, I believe, were scheming behind the scenes, if you ask me. I don't know all of the details, but they had this song called Glory of Love in 1985. And as you know, it went uh, to number one. Karate Kid soundtrack was a huge, huge hit. And... I believe that would have been a Chicago song if Peter had stayed. Now, a lot of people mistake it for Chicago because it sounds just eerily like something off of Chicago 17. Uh, it was off of Peter's solo album. I believe the name of the album was Solitude Solitaire, from what I remember. Uh, and honestly, that album is a very weak album. Uh, other than Glory of Love and The Next Time I Fall, uh, you've got a ton of filler. You've got a lot of uh, very techy AOR sounding material that wasn't very catchy, that wasn't hit bound. It was, uh, it was just songs for, you know, the sake of songs. And 
Uh, what's sad and depressing is I believe the material on Chicago 18, which Foster, by the way, ended up staying to record because he wanted to work with Chicago again uh, with Jason Sheff. And here's another interesting little odd detail is that Peter Cetera was ticked off at Foster for going back and working with Chicago. I think Peter thought, hey, I left and we had a deal and now you're going to go and work with them again and Peter for his next album I believe uh, used the guy who was producing Madonna albums uh, or working a guy who worked with Madonna I think Madonna actually has a vocal on the album so I think that's true the point I'm trying to make though is that it was a very weird circumstance that led to Cetera leaving uh, he thought he could do it on his own he thought he had Foster in his back pocket, and if you know uh, anything about Peter's career after that first solo album, it, the trajectory was kind of... Now, Chicago sustained their you know, growth right through the end of the 80s, and uh, then you know, the record label kind of made some mistakes, and especially with Chicago 21. Uh, they didn't use the original Ron Nevison mix of that album, and... What you get is a watered-down Humberto Gattaca production, and it just wasn't uh, like Chicago 19. Uh, and honestly, the music industry probably had started to do that little pivot away from bands with melodic tendencies. It's really sad, but by 1991, things were starting to change, 92, 93, and by 94, you know, uh, if you knew how to play your instrument, you probably weren't in fashion anymore. And that's the tragedy of all of that. But the truth is, Cetera was fired. He was told, hey, this is a democracy. All that stuff goes back to William Gersio, the guy who originally produced Chicago and told everybody that they were expendable. And he did so because he wanted to create an atmosphere where nobody thought they were better. And Peter Cetera, I think the guy is an amazing talent, but man, does he think his you-know-what doesn't stink. He just is really in love with himself. And so is David Foster. Uh, so their egos obviously clashed. Foster went back to Chicago, uh, probably thought he would turn Jason Sheff into a big star. Uh, and by the way, I'm not sure who brought Jason Sheff in. Uh, if it was Foster, great. If it was Danny Serafin uh, or some other person in the band. I know they heard the tape and uh, here's the thing though, David Foster probably wouldn't have worked with Chicago if he thought Jason Sheff wasn't up to the task because David Foster does not put out crap. So anyway, that's my take on the entire Chicago thing again. I wanted to clarify a little bit. I did a video a long time ago where I said Foster ruined Chicago. I would say Foster changed Chicago a little bit too much and he even admits it in the documentary and then Cetera the big news in this is that Cetera was not just you know I'm gonna go off and do a solo career no Cetera was told to pack your bags and get out so that's it I'm Dave and this is the Real Music Observer and I'll be back again uh, soon to observe more real music in real time for real people just like you and this dude right here talk to you then